Hello, welcome to the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. Hebrews 12 admonishes us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken a seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. We hope that by joining us today in worship, that you will be strengthened so that you might endure whatever your week may hold, and that you will be filled so that you will not lose heart in this great and glorious life that God has called you to live. May you be blessed by the time you spend with us today. God, we thank you that you are always God and you are always good. We thank you that you help us to throw off the sin that entangles us and also you invite us to lay down the burdens that overwhelm us. We ask that you meet us on these screens in our hearts and in our minds and that we will know you better for the time we spend with you right now. We love you, Jesus. We're so grateful that you love us. Continue to teach us what it means to love others better. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome. We're glad you're here. And may you meet God today during this time.
gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, your will be done today. Your will be done in us, in this church, in this service. Lord, we give you praise. We come 
to you today thankful that you are a good God. You, you are good and, and we are not. You have shown us mercy when we don't deserve it. And Lord, we've seen time and time again that you save. There is power in your name even to save. And so Lord, many of us come today in, in, in different um, walks of life, experiencing different emotions. Um, Lord, would you, those of us who, who need mercy today, Lord, we ask for your mercy. Lord, those of us today who need saving from something, Lord, would you save? And, and Lord, would you teach us today in this service to trust you more? Would you teach us something that will deepen our, our trust in you? Because, because we know that, that you alone are good. We give this time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome. It's good to have you with us today. We would love to connect with you. If you are new, you can go to our website, fmcsb.org, where you can fill out a connection card, a prayer card, or where you can reach out to one of the pastors who would love to get together with you. Speaking of prayer, we have a couple of prayer opportunities during the week. We have our midday prayer every weekday from 1130 to 12. And on Sundays, we have prayer and share at 1045 in the morning. All of our prayer times are on Zoom. We continue to have worship under the tent every Sunday morning at 9.30 uh, here, of course, on our Free Methodist site. We, we do please ask you to RSVP as our numbers are increasing. We're getting close to our county guidelines, and we just want to make sure that we, we stay safe uh, for the county for all of our faith gatherings. So again, you can RSVP on our website for worship under the tent. We want to bring your attention to a few blood drives that are being held by Vitalant, they are going to be happening November 3rd and 24th at the Camino Real Marketplace. You can sign up for those blood drives on the news and events page of our website. We're also excited to have a young adult and college worship night on Friday, November 6th at 7 o'clock. That will be happening on the church campus under the tent, and uh, we invite you to bring a friend to that. It's a great time to get to, to meet other people there. If you have any questions, you can email or call Pastor Nikki about that. We are having the second meeting of our prayer rally for racial justice on November 4th at 6 to 7 p.m. That will be on Zoom. We're joining with other churches in our free Methodist denomination who are forming their own prayer rallies. And our goal is to seek God's spirit for racial justice and to ask God to make uh, our hearts reflect his. This will be a time of loosely structured prayer, lament, confession, and intercession together. Finally, we would love to hear from you how you are thankful during this season. We're going to be putting together some Thanksgiving videos for our worship service on November 22nd. Um, if you would like to send in a video of Thanksgiving, you can do that by sending it to maddie at fmcsb.org by November 19th. As today is All Saints Day, we remember people who have gone on ahead of us. We remember people in our own lives who we miss and who we cared for. We remember people in the life of the church in the 65 years of the Free Methodist Church who have uh, invested in the church, in our social program, Cliff Drive Care Center, who have, have given of their time and of their resources so that they can glorify God and that our church can be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. As we go in giving today, let us also consider how we can invest in the ministry to our neighbors in this community. Hey, FM kids. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you came. I was hoping someone would show up. 
I wanted to kind of show off my, my trophy and, and all my ribbons and awards. Do you like them? Well, to be honest, they're not really mine. I kind of went in my boy's room and took them out. So let's not tell them I did that. But I just wanted to know, do you, do you have any awards or ribbons or, or trophies? Do you have any of these in your room? You do? How did you get those? You won a race, a contest. Well, that's a pretty good way to win those trophies and awards. What kind of race did you did you run? Bike. Oh, a spelling contest. <laughs> good for you because that's not one contest I don't think I would ever win. But you know, in Philippians three thirteen to fourteen in the Bible, Paul actually talks about a race of pressing towards a goal. But he said, forget what's behind you. I mean, think of it. Would you want to run a race and keep looking back while you're running to see where you started or where you came from? Would you want to run and turn around and run and turn around and run and turn around? I don't think you'd really win a race that way. You wouldn't be going very fast. And well, if you're like me, I'd probably trip and fall and well, that would be the end of that race. I mean, races are hard enough without doing that and keep turning around. You have to work hard when you're racing. And quite honestly, sometimes it's not easy because there's people that don't want you to win. There's people that want to win themselves and they'll do almost sometimes anything to stop you from winning. In fact, I've even seen where people have been playing big baseball games or running and they run by and people boo them. Boo! I mean, that would not make me feel very good. And it definitely wouldn't want me to keep going. But you know what? Sometimes then there's people that actually want us to win. And you walk by or you run by and they clap and they cheer and they're like, go, go, you're almost there. And you go faster and it actually, it actually makes you feel better. But, you know, races, races are hard. Sometimes you just get tired and sometimes you just want to stop. But you know, you're never going to win if you don't get to that finish line. Well, you know, Christians, we're in a race too. In the Christian race, sometimes they're really good days. Things are fun. Things are being encouraged. We're reading the Bible. God's answering our prayers the way we kind of hoped he would. And things are just great. But then sometimes in that Christian race, things don't go so well. Things are a little difficult. Things are challenging. Things don't really go the way we want them to go. And the prayers aren't answered the way they, we want them to be answered. And sometimes we feel sad. I mean, some, right now, we, we don't really get to go sometimes to school and do the things we want. And it can be hard. But what's great about this Christian race is it isn't about pushing other people down so we can beat them. I mean, our goal is to help everybody finish this race, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus and he is the real prize. And when we reach that finish line, we're all winners. How wonderful is that? I mean, to see Jesus, to run this race, and live our life for him and have him next to us. Well, that's better than any trophy or any award that we could ever get here on earth. So remember what Paul said is true. Don't look behind you, look ahead of you and keep your eyes on our real prize, Jesus. I'm so glad I got to see you. And again, I better go put these back before they realize they're missing. <laughs> see you later. Today is All Saints Day, and it's a tradition in the church to read the Beatitudes from Matthew 5. This is G Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. So would you read these words along with me? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we enter into a time of corporate prayer, we are very mindful that this is the last Sunday before the election. I want to remind you that we have provided some very good resources for all of us as Christians who are engaged in the political process. The encounter series that Pastor Nikki initiated is very good. We have a statement from the bishops that are on, that is on our website, as well as some other resources. And we just encourage all of us to be looking at those things and be very mindful and prayerful as we head into this election. We begin our prayer today with a verse from 1 Chronicles 29, 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth, yours is the dominion, O Lord, and you exalt yourself as head over all. Let us pray. Eternal and holy God, we know as we come before you that we are on holy ground. Together we approach your throne of grace, seeking you, hoping to experience your living presence in a way that lifts our souls. We confess that we are a weary people. We are working hard to do good and to follow you. And we're exhausted from living in a world full of heartache and divisiveness, unknown outcomes, violence, sickness, and disasters. There's nothing new about this, as the earth is a broken place, but Lord, we grieve. We grieve over the pain of this earth, not just for us personally, but for so many. Jesus, please take our burdens from us. You who were pierced for our transgressions, who took our punishment upon your body, you know, Jesus, all we face. We lay our burdens down so that we can see you. We want to know you more, Lord. Help us to put our focus on you alone. Help us to rest in you. Help us to take this moment recognizing your Lordship in our lives. God, there is none like you. Everything belongs to you in the universe. You have all power and glory. In this week when we will vote, we pray, you will remind us that you hold all truth. Show us again who we are in you. All of us have various ways of looking at the world and ideas about the best directions our nations and our local community should go. Thank you for the voice we have been given. Thank you for the change that we can affect. Voting is one way we can influence the outcome of laws, of who leads us and where our resources go. Give us wisdom, we pray. Give us vision, God, for Santa Barbara, for our county, for our state, God, for our nation. Empower those you have allowed to be our leaders with discernment. Empower them, God, with the good of all people in mind. And in the ways where we feel angry or fearful or judgmental, we seek your kingdom first and ask God for your mind. No matter the outcome, we ask for peace in our nation, for the ones who are voted for to humbly accept the honor, and for the ones who were not voted for to accept the will of the people. 
In your sovereignty, we ask for your guidance and direction. Help us sort through what we wanted and our feelings on the final count, giving us the same attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Lord, remind us as your church that we don't put our ultimate hope in a political process or a government or any human leader. We put our hope in you and we seek your will, Jesus, above all. Show us how we can act each day to bring the change we want to see affected. Lead us to humility and grace with one another when we disagree. Move us to act in compassion for the poor, the lost, the incarcerated, the helpless, the one who has no power. This is what you taught us, God. Help us not neglect the widow and the orphan. Help the witness of your body to be uppermost in our minds, our actions, and our words. Give us passion to make you known all of our days. Everything here is so fleeting, God. May we hold the tension of our temporary and eternal homes in balance. Be glorified in us and exalted in the world you have made, we pray. May your will be done. We ask all these things we have prayed aloud and also in the privacy of our hearts. In the name of our Lord and Savior and King Jesus. Amen. time you see this, you will have gotten an extra hour of sleep. Praise the Lord for rest. So we all should be ready to hear the word of the Lord, awake and alert 
Philippians 3, starting at verse 12 today. Philippians 3, 12, going through the end of the chapter, and I will be reading from the NRSV. Not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Paul has been talking about knowing Christ and the power of the resurrection. He has been telling the church how he longs to share in the sufferings of Jesus by becoming like the Lord in death. If only, he says, he could experience the resurrection to eternal life when the time comes for him. As Pastor Nikki preached last week, Paul used to have many goals in his life, ones that were in line with his education and his standing and his lineage and his culture. And now he considers all of those ideals and hard work as meaningless, as rubbish, he says, compared to knowing Jesus. Jesus who has made Paul his own. What a beautiful thing to say. We are made to be in relationship with Christ. Paul's longing isn't just what he wants. It's the universal cry of the human spirit. Paul lets go of everything that he held as precious in his life in order to know the Savior not just in a foggy mirror as we do on earth, but face to face one day is his hope. That is why Paul keeps going, he says. That is why he presses on. Nothing is more important than knowing Jesus. And this scripture is a reminder to the church that that is our goal in every age, in every time, in every place. So we're going to look at three ideas from from this passage before communion today. So idea number one, I want to ask, what is it that you have attained in Christ? Stop and think about that. Paul is talking about what we've gained by knowing Jesus. What is it that you have gained by knowing the Savior? This passage encourages the reader to look around their lives and to see what they have obtained and to hold on, hold on fast to the Savior. This is really good. Don't focus on what you have given up for God as much as what you have gotten out of being connected to Jesus, the life-changing presence walking with the Lord every day. Jesus asks a good question when he says, What shall it profit a person if they gain the whole world but suffer the loss of their soul? When I think about my life, I am grateful that the Lord saved me as a teenager. He spared me a lot of heartache 
and poor choices, although I still manage to make quite a few. Yet Paul is right. Nothing compares to the surpassing joy of knowing the living God. Not one thing. Not the best job, relationship, pleasure, anything that we could pur purchase or accomplish here. The best of everything doesn't compare to knowing Christ. Nothing comes close. We are made to know God, and when we do, our souls are filled with the one who gives the sun its light. We are filled by the one who lovingly knits each child in their mother's womb, the one who has storehouses of snow and who tells the proud ocean waves where to stop. We are filled with the one who dies in our place. So when we have the life of Christ in us, everything changes. When we could say that we have been given forgiveness and purpose and community and joy, it's hard to translate why those things matter. It's hard to express what the life, the Holy Spirit of Christ in us means and looks like every day. But those things are there and are so important and life-giving. So let us hold tight to Jesus and give thanks for what we have in him as we move forward to the finish line. Verse 13 says, we strain forward to what lies ahead. We hold on to Christ and we press forward to the real life that awaits us. Knowing our goal helps us know where to run and how to run. If it's not Christ, if Christ isn't our goal, then we need to figure out what is and why we're running and whether or not it's worth it. Idea number two. Paul says to imitate him. We've talked about this before. He says to imitate him and to observe those people who have lived a good example of Christ in them. He says, don't look at the bad examples all around. Those who live as enemies to the cross grieve the heart of God. End is, the end is going to be their destruction because they fill themselves only with what is here. This is All Saints Day, and I think this ties into exactly what Paul is saying when he says, observe those who live holy and good lives around you, who are examples of the faith. All Saints Day is set aside for remembering those who go before us, who now live in the presence of God. We join them in worship. They worship the Lord all the time, and when we worship, we are joining in the heavenly worship. The earliest observance of All Saints Day was recorded in the 4th century, but it was formally adopted as a day by Pope Boniface IV in the year 609, when he dedicated the Pantheon in Rome to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and those who had been martyred for the faith. Now, even after the Reformation, many Protestants kept this day as a day of giving the Lord thanks for the faithful Christians who have passed over the gold line of their faith. In 2003, Pope John Paul II said this, We observe today, as All Saints Day, the solemnity of all the saints. This invites us to turn our gaze to the immense multitude of those who have already reached the blessed land and points us on the path that will lead us to that destination. When Mark's mother, Judy, passed away, she wrote all of us letters. She loved the Lord with all of her heart, and although she would have wanted to stay to see her children and grandchildren continue to grow, she was ready to meet Jesus. She knew it was hard for us to go on without her, so she wrote all of us notes that were unique for each person. Here's how mine started. Colleen, if you are reading this, I am in heaven. What a glorious place to be. I've always imagined it, and now I am able to experience the reality of what I believed. I think about her words often. Heaven, what a glorious place to be for those who trust Christ. 
and who long for the home prepared for those who love him. Who do you honor today? Who remains in your heart and mind but has gone on to be with Jesus? I can think of so many. Those people who inspired us by their faith, who prayed for us, who served the Lord with gladness, who bore so much fruit for the kingdom, who encouraged others, who grew in Christ's likeness, even though life was hard, even though life was painful and difficult, they continued to trust the Lord in their time here. On our bulletin, you'll see quotes from those uh, saints from around the world. What I like is how all of them express how they are cheering on those of us who are still here to keep the faith, to press on toward the goal. Those who finish the race can continue through their words and writings to spur us on to love and good deeds. And may we one day be remembered as those who were faithful to God. May we be ones who embolden others to live for Christ while still here. Idea number three. Paul is talking about a very timely idea here for us. Citizenship in heaven. This is the only time this word occurs in the New Testament. In the time of this writing, being a Roman citizen was a high honor and prize is it brought identity to the lofty empire. To be a citizen meant one had rights that were a great advantage in terms of owning property and legal contracts and marriage and holding office and voting. Citizens could gain more wealth and power because they were citizens and then pass on that privilege to their children and grandchildren. When Paul was arrested, he used his Roman citizen to his advantage on purpose so that he wouldn't be whipped or tortured or receive the death penalty without a fair trial. We talked about how the Philippians prized their connection to Rome as they emulated so many characteristics of the empire. Instead of being uniquely Philippian in their nature, they were undeniably Roman. And Paul uses this fact to remind them that Roman colonists never forget that they belong to Rome. And so in the same way, because it's prized and wonderful of a place, Christians should never forget that heaven is the place where they give their allegiance. Paul is telling the church to look and sound like people who belong to a different realm instead of the place where they are currently located. Citizens of all nations, including ours today, have certain rights which are highly valued. Paul is reminding the believers that we have a dual citizenship here and in heaven with Christ. But more than even holding on to the duality that we belong to, Paul is exhorting us that we are part of the heavenly city first and foremost. And when we arrive in that place, we expect Jesus to transform us with the new body as we experience and recognize his lordship fully over us. This is where our true hope lies, not where we currently reside, but in the place where we someday will be soon. Paul ends by talking about how Jesus will transform our humble bodies to be like his glorious body. In the place where all things are made new, we will once again be become more like him as we resurrect from our mortal death. So as we come into communion, it is startling to us once again how Jesus takes all of our wrongdoing, all of our pain, all of our heartache, all of our brokenness, all of the things that we do and all the things that are done to us on his body, on himself. The sin we commit as individuals, but also he takes on himself the framework of the sin of the institutions and the bodies and systems and families. So we come to this moment in our journey asking Jesus for healing and for strength 
as we press on through faith. We bring our fractured lives to him and ask that he would make us whole, believing in what he is doing now and looking forward to the day that will come when all things will be made new through his power and grace. May we rejoice today in what we have gained through Christ. May we live by faith in our journey as we press forward to the goal. And may we remember that we are citizens first of God's kingdom in all we do, in all we accomplish, and all we want to see changed here. In the sacred act of communion, may this be a significant moment of Christ meeting us where we are and encouraging us and leading us forward to eternity. This is the invitation of the sacrament. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and humbly kneeling make your honest confession to Almighty God. Let us confess together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness and your love, and we deserve only your indignation and anger. We sincerely repent and we are genuinely sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved, and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, Give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in reading the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O oh, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness to all who turn to you with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from our sins. Make us strong and faithful in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is always right and proper and our moral duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the inhabitants of heaven, we honor and adore your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We do not come to your table, O merciful Lord, with self-confidence and pride, trusting in our own righteousness. But we trust in your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table. But you, O Lord, are unchanging in your mercy, and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the merits of his shed blood, so that we may live and grow in his likeness, and being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all, did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world, we come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly ask and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded, and in the memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. In the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, and when he did, he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of this, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We invite you now to partake of the elements that you have gathered together in your own home. As we do so, let us remember that Christ is our peace. This is an act of remembrance, of recommittal, of confession. It's a time when the Lord meets with us and speaks directly to our souls. He who lives in us is greater than he who lives in the world. So may this be a precious time with you and the Lord.
benediction today comes from Revelation. To the Lamb who sits on the throne, be glory and honor and power and praise. As we end our time now of communion, may that continue to be the truth that resonates in our hearts and minds. To the Lamb who sits on the throne, pass the peace of Christ, the peace that comes from the Lamb to those around you. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we've come gathered together to lift up your name call on our Savior, to fall on your grave.